Hey friends, welcome back to Truthitude. I'm Lindsay. Today I want to talk about the power of language and how being an exceptional conversationalist can really make you feel more confident and powerful as a woman. I love words. I nerd out hardcore when it comes to words and I think that language is one of our most powerful tools to communicate boundaries, set ourselves up as leaders, and position ourselves as powerful women. So today I'm going to share with you powerful phrases to command any conversation. Number one, I don't share that perspective. We are living in a world where everybody has an opinion and so many people are committed to being right. And we've kind of lost the art of just agreeing to disagree. So when somebody comes at you with their opinion or you're on social media and you see somebody say something that's just batshit crazy, I want you to use this phrase. I don't share that opinion but that's certainly one way to look at it. This phrase was said to me by my friend's mom when we were having a conversation that we didn't have the same view on. And I just thought this was so brilliant because she was clearly stating to me that she didn't agree with my perspective, but it wasn't in a way that made me defensive or that started a debate. She clearly stated her opinion and that she didn't agree with my view, but it wasn't an invitation for a debate or an argument. And I just really respected her for saying that. And I really thought it was just a brilliant way to continue our conversation in a respectful way. This does a number of things. One, it acknowledges their opinion without necessarily validating it. Two, it clearly establishes your position without inviting a debate. It also shuts down the possibility of an argument because you're not placing value on one opinion over the other. Number two, can you share your source? Now, this kind of relates to the first phrase because people have so many opinions and we live in a time where technology and the internet has enabled people to find facts and statistics to really back up any opinion that they have. There is so much information and misinformation out there that you really could find a fact or a statistic to back up any opinion that exists. So the next time someone tries to one up you in a conversation by throwing a fact in your face or bombarding you with statistics or studies, just say, hey, that's an interesting statement or that's an interesting statistic. I'd really love to explore that. Can you share your source or can you share where you got that? This is a really easy way to call somebody on their bullshit without being confrontational. And it not only positions you as a learner and a leader, it gives you the opportunity to become more informed. Maybe what they're saying is true and you can now research that and find a credible source to inform yourself about their position and maybe even change your stance. So I highly encourage you to use this and my hope for people is to become more informed with accurate information and this is a wonderful way to do that. If you have ever experienced interruption or mansplaining, then this phrase is perfect for taking the floor back. Number three, I'm not done. Hemp eruption and mansplaining are rampant in corporate culture, but we as women experience this in our relationships with friends, families, in our romantic life as well. Women are constantly being cut off, dismissed, and talked over, and not only is this rude and unprofessional, it actually diminishes our value and our contributions in the workplace and in our relationships. And it has a really negative impact on our self-esteem and team morale. This causes women to contribute less and to shrink and to lower their voices. So the next time somebody interrupts you or talks over you, or dismisses you, I want you to say, thank you for sharing. 
I wasn't done. I'd like to finish what I was saying. This is a major power play because you acknowledge the person while looking poised and professional and still communicating the standard that you expect to be treated with respect and that your ideas are just as valuable as anybody else. This demonstrates your ability as a leader and your ability to command a room and get your brilliant ideas heard. Number four, let me get back to you. So we live in a world where we are expected to provide an immediate answer to any question that we are asked. And that causes us to be snagged by knee jerk decision making. And if we could just take a minute to wear options and think critically, we would all be better off. We have demands and requests coming at us all the time from all different directions in our professional life, our romantic life, our personal life, from our friends, our families, our lovers. When you learn to answer with, let me get back to you, and you also ask, when do you need to know by, or when do you need an answer, this allows you to take some time to think and also gather additional information if you need. This empowers you to be fully informed and committed to the answer. Number five. I have a prior commitment. With society and technology creating this atmosphere of unlimited access and availability, it often causes us to feel the need to overextend ourselves. And women already struggle to say no, especially in the workplace where we have to work twice as hard. So we feel this pressure to please. There is a toxic culture that if we set boundaries, we run the risk of looking like we are not as dedicated and it creates this kind of beck and call type of culture. So if the boss asks us to stay late or come in on our day off or come in on the weekend or go to a last minute event, we often feel like we can't say no. But actually setting and effectively communicating our standards and our boundaries makes us stand out as leaders. So the next time you get a last minute request, either from your boss or a friend or a family, you can simply say, I can't stay or I can't go. I have a prior commitment, but maybe next time with some advance notice. And I caveat that with you do not need to explain what your prior commitment is. What you do on your personal time is nobody's business. Obviously there are exceptions when you have a major project or a deadline or something pops up last minute that's really important. Obviously there's a level of flexibility that we need to have. The point is not to allow this to be a habit of people controlling your time. You need to be in control of your time and you need to get really good at setting and communicating these standards and boundaries for yourself. There you have it, powerful phrases to command any conversation. And although these may seem relevant to your professional life, I highly encourage you to practice them and implement them in your personal life as well. Not only do these allow you to command any conversation, but they position you as a powerful woman and a strong leader. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope that you find these phrases helpful. I hope that you liked this video. And if you did, be sure to give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and follow me on social media. I will leave the links in the description box below. Head over to the blog for more content and more inspiration. And I have something really exciting that I've been working on. Most of my content, as you know, is dedicated to empowering women. However, I decided to take a risk and try my hand at helping the guys out a little bit with my podcast, The Insider Podcast. I really truly believe that educating men empowers women, so I'm super excited for the launch of my podcast. It's coming out on September 3rd, so be sure to hop over to truthitude.com to check out the podcast on September 3rd. I will leave a link in the description box. Thanks again for watching. Until next time, stay true to the truthitude. I'll see you guys then. Ciao. Doesn't give me the time I need to think about stuff.